Welcome to the third lesson in our engineering design process series. Today we'll be talking about generating and screening ideas. I'm Denny Davis. I'll be leading our discussion today. Generating and screening ideas occurs in the second phase of our engineering design process. Note that in the first phase and problem definition, we came up with game strategy and defined some needs. So when do we generate and screen ideas? After these needs are defined. Also before concepts are created. Concepts, once developed, will lead us through the next stages of our design process. But note that idea generation may be necessary at other points in our design process. Whenever we encounter a need for some new ideas, in other words, we've identified some additional needs that we hadn't thought of before, it may be time to generate ideas and then screen those to find the best ones. The topics we're going to discuss today begin with the purposes of idea generation. We'll then look at some methods that are useful for generating ideas. We'll look at some examples to show us how that might be applied. Then we'll begin talking about idea screening, why we do that, and then some methods for screening ideas. Why do we generate ideas? Of course, we want to find some possible ways to meet that. The needs we have identified, the robot has. We would like to expand the number of ideas so that we have multiple ideas to choose from and hopefully some really good ideas. If we can identify creative ways, that could make our robot stand out. Of course, if we're in FTC and we aspire to winning or being considered for the Innovative Award, we need creative ideas. Well, what is the definition of innovation? Innovation is simply a new method, an idea, or product, something that's new and different. For the Innovative Award, specifically, they state that the robot or some subassembly must be creative, elegant, and unique in its design. And this creative component must be stable, robust, work reliably. This term elegant is sometimes uh, difficult to put arms around. It needs to be simple, coherent, it really fits together and works together well, but also impactful. It impacts the performance of our robot. So we're, we're looking at innovations that will really add value and uniqueness to our robot. An example from our team's uh, previous years was the choo-choo mechanism used to launch balls uh, rapidly with accurate launching trajectory. Turning the crank here would, would uh, cock the launcher and then it would suddenly release it giving that repeatable performance. It was an innovation that many other teams copied so they saw the value of it. It worked well. It was reliable, robust. It met these criteria. We, when we're generating new ideas, one thing we need to consider is we could simply adopt ideas that already exist. So we begin by searching for existing ideas. They don't need to be in the novel, but just what are some good ideas that are out there? So where do we look? Well, begin by asking yourself, where have we met this type of a need in the past? Perhaps in our previous robots and prototypes that we, we tried, we can come up with ideas that might have some value. 
How about other teams? We often see other teams that perform really well in a certain function that we need to now employ. So by reviewing other teams' uh, robot releases, game videos, we can spot how other teams have uh, performed something that uh, a robot needs to perform. We can also look around and say, what are some of the other devices around that do similar things, provide functionality that we need? Look at household tools, farm machines, industrial machines, get ideas from these. Another place is just to look at our creation. Humans and animals have some incredible functionality. And biomimicry is simply taking the mechanisms that are inspired by nature and creating mechanical devices to do similar things. This is another way to identify and then adopt ideas. Now, if we're going to actually generate some new ideas, a common way that most people are familiar with is what we call brainstorming. So what is brainstorming? Simply a rapid verbalization of ideas without interrupting that. Just shooting off the ideas that we can come up with quickly. This can be done by individuals. They just kind of have a brain dump of ideas. Then they begin making variations off these and exaggerations in order to come up with more and more ideas. Another way is to do this as a group, having a group brainstorm. This usually works best when you do it after individuals have done their own brainstorming and then they come together, share their ideas in, in some round robin fashion. Then you begin combining and modifying ideas to come up with even more ideas. Once you I think you run the gamut and don't have any more ideas, there are other techniques to expand upon your initial list. One of these is just to categorize the ideas that you have. Identify the categories they fall into. Identify where there are some gaps and begin filling gaps. An example might be when you're trying to find ideas for sensing the presence of an object. We often think of using sensors. So we identify different kinds of sensors. Each of those could be another idea. Someone may mention, well, let's use a camera or sense the weight. Well, those are fine, but there are variations of those as well. So when we see that certain categories don't have other ideas under them, we can begin brainstorming for ideas that fit under each of these categories. That will expand the total number of ideas available to us. Another way is just to look for wild ideas or what if ideas. Now what if gravity wasn't at play in this situation? Would that give us some new ideas? What if one of these rules that seems to be very constraining to us were eliminated? Then how would we solve the problem? What if we reverse the action? So the game may say that we need to put something on a ring on a peg. Well, what if we were to have a game where we had to take the ring off the peg? How would you do that? That might lead to some more ideas. So just by doing some wild things, we can spur on some additional ideas. But there are always guidelines that we need to use to make sure that we really capture all the ideas that are, that are being thought of. People sometimes hold back and are hesitant to share their ideas. We want to encourage many ideas. 
we also want to make sure that we record all of these ideas because if we share a lot of them but don't capture them, they're no longer going to be available to us. We also need to look for many variations from the basic ideas that are identified. Sometimes it's good just to have some prizes out there to give an award for the individual or group who comes up with the most ideas. And sometimes that really spurs people on to be creative. We also need to encourage creativity. And what is it that uh, hinders them when we criticize people's ideas? So we must not criticize ideas as they're being shared. We also don't want to react negatively. Sometimes we don't say anything, but we laugh, we sneer, we give a strange look that can also kill people's willingness to share. So we want to um, prevent these kinds of words or expressions or actions that might hinder the sharing of ideas. Also, positive encouragement and celebration of creative ideas can spur people on. And remember, we can also solicit ideas from people outside of our group. Sometimes parents, friends, ask them how they would solve this problem, get their ideas. And again, offering rewards for the most creative ideas might also spur people on. Our goal is to get the most ideas and the most creativity in our ideas. All right, when we're generating ideas, it's good to have a focus for any particular period when we're generating these ideas. So a good way to do that is generate ideas for one major function at a time. For example, oftentimes a robot has to collect something. So generating ideas for collection systems could be one focus. Also, we often have to deliver something, deliver a game element to a certain place. So delivery systems could be another focus for idea generation. And then sometimes we need to transfer from a collection to delivery. And that could be another focus. Let's uh, take some examples. Let's look at collection system ideas. First, what might be some common ways for collecting things such as these rings. One could be just a scoop, different shapes, brushes, tongs. We could come up with some off-the-wall ideas, a hook, a suction plate, Conforming grip, something that conforms around what we're trying to pick up. Or something that you insert and then it expands to grab it. When it comes to delivery ideas, again, we start thinking creative. Some common ideas might include just dropping a ring. Tossing the ring. Again, we have variations. It could be from the side, from the front. Sliding something and then letting it drop. And we could come up with some other more original ideas. Maybe we decide to remove our opponent's ring and then put ours in its place in order to get some bonus points. That may not be allowed, but at least we can think about that. Perhaps guiding, putting a guide on for sliding a ring over a pig. A 
for transfer. Some common ideas might be handoff, one gripper to another. You slide from one point into another. And here we see the sliding off a scoop onto into a hopper, and then by tipping it or moving it could slide over and fall into a delivery. Tossing it, toss from the collecting device to the delivery device, dropping it into the delivery hopper, and then we could think beyond that. How about just rolling it, rolling it down a ramp or something? Or spinning throw like a frisbee throw from one part of the robot to the other. So you see, you can come up with a wide range of different kinds of ideas. We might also consider combining functions and generating ideas that would cover multiple functions at one time. For example, perhaps we can unify collection, transfer, and delivery into one mechanism. Brainstorm for ways to do that. First might be a rotating arm, which simply goes from collecting a ring to rotating over and delivering it without needing to transfer it to another mechanism. Another possibility might be a slider where the robot collects and then moves it along the slider for delivery. So you see there can be ideas generated for something that is a more complex function here which accomplishes the collection and delivery with one mechanism. So ideas for that would be of great value. What do we need to do to document the ideas that we've generated? For greatest value, we should document all the ideas we've generated by a given date. We should show the number of ideas. It's a good idea to categorize these ideas. So in our notebook, present them by category perhaps giving some examples of the best ideas for a particular category and putting the remainder in some appendix. For those ideas that we believe are especially unique, we should highlight those. Perhaps a, a text box insert or a table would show the innovative ideas, the source of the idea, the date at which it occurred, and identify what it is about the idea that is unique. It's also a good idea to sketch or show a model of what the idea is so that people understand what we're talking about and we can remind ourselves what it was that was the basis of our idea. So up to this point, we have identified ideas. Now let's consider screening out some of these ideas. Why would we screen out some ideas? First of all, we want to limit the workload so it's reasonable for us. So if we can exclude some of the ideas from taking them forward to developing them into concepts or prototyping, will save ourselves a lot of work. Another reason for screening out ideas, sometimes you have an idea that just nobody has interest in developing and doesn't offer any significant innovation. So tossing it aside could be a good way just to save some work. Now, if ideas have significant weaknesses toward one of the needs that's high priority for us, clearly those ideas could be set aside or screened out as well. Maybe it, the idea cannot produce the functionality we want, 
Maybe it's just not going to be technically sound. Maybe it would require a lot of resources that we don't really want to invest. Maybe it causes a safety hazard or some other curse for the operators or for those that are using it in some way. So these are all ideas or reasons for screening out ideas. I would suggest that we consider, if we have a lot of ideas, that we do some initial screening. Take a first cut. Get rid of some of those that just are obviously not going to be worth pursuing. So I suggest an initial screening matrix where we list our ideas and then list these four categories of needs that we talked about earlier. Needs for the function, the technical needs that we have to meet, the resource consumption, the human needs, and rate each of these ideas and whether they're strong in that area, weak in that area, or just in between. So we can use a simple plus, zero, minus way of designating um, how well each idea contributes to each of these needs, types of needs, categories of needs. Then with this information, we can quickly look them over and see, oh, those that disqualify are those that have significant weaknesses. So in this case, we have some of them that have two weak areas, or maybe one weak area. But we would think carefully about those and maybe dropping those right away. This can greatly reduce the number of ideas we have to deal with. It eliminates ideas that have fatal flaws. And yet it keeps the ideas that have some real potential in them. With smaller numbers of ideas, we can do a little more serious uh, screening. I might call a secondary screening and use another matrix of this type listing the ideas but now listing specific needs that we'd identified as priorities for us we screen against these priority needs and a good way would be to score each of these now with a one to three or one to five rating well, one is four and the highest number is the strongest uh, fit for those particular needs. Then we look at the scores, sum up the total score. The low scores here would be those that we consider dropping, disqualifying. Notice also here that their idea five and idea six have a number of um, weaknesses, scores of one. So they also end up with the lowest total score. So we would think that by limiting those two, that would remove ideas that have some serious flaws, more than one flaw, and keep the ideas that have some potential for the subsystem that we were um, screening ideas from. Let's do a couple of examples. Let's try the initial screening and focus on ideas for collection. We may start with a table such as this, listing a bunch of ideas here. I'm only showing four. For each of those, then rate them relative to the four categories of needs we had. It probably works best to rate in the um, under each of those functions so that you're comparing the different ideas relative to one another. Notice here that we have a number of negatives um, all under the human side. So the human needs that we identified seem to be a weakness in our ideas. Now also, as we look at each idea and the pluses and minuses, 
we see quite a number of negatives here. So we have weaknesses in these three that I've outlined. More than one weakness in each of those three. So it may justify eliminating those. By doing that, we've now reduced the number of ideas significantly. There were probably a lot more that I didn't show here. And we retained an idea that has some good potential. This was our initial screen. Let's try a secondary screen and this time look at delivery ideas. We're going to rate them 1 to 3 for delivery. I've identified some of the high priority needs. Scoring speed, scoring success, etc. And I've identified four different ideas here. Notice that the two of these ideas have multiple weaknesses. The spin throw and the slide with a hole. And so those would be a couple that we would consider dropping. Notice also that the uh, tip onto the peg has one weakness. But when thinking about it, one can see that that weakness could easily be resolved if we simply use some way of automating, knowing when we're in the right position and then allowing the robot to release the tip of the ring at the right time. So although it's a weakness here, we see that there's a potential to remove that weakness fairly easily. And so we would probably retain this idea. So that means we would probably just eliminate two of the ideas retain two of the ideas that have some good potential. So what do we do then with to document uh, the screening process and the ideas that came out? First of all, we want to document the screen or the, the capped ideas and the date at which this uh, decision was made. Show the best ideas that remain by function. So here, for example, ideas for collection. We may show that we have this particular idea of a reversed sweeper that lifts and throws a ring onto a scoop. We spell out what the strengths were and some concerns that we have. We may also uh, well notice that by doing this, we're helping us to understand why we kept this idea and what additional concerns or things we may need to address as we uh, develop it further. We would want to annotate this well, sketch it to explain so that people knew what it was that this idea intended to be. In summary then, we generate ideas for each major function or serious need that we have. We encourage creativity and bring in the people that have this uh, ability, make sure they are contributing well. Seek as many ideas as possible. Record all these ideas for our documentation. And we need to remember that until we get good ideas, we should keep working at it. Some teams might stop generating ideas because they've had a day of doing it, but didn't come up with anything of value. Somehow we need to identify ways to continue this process until we come up with good ideas for the functionality that uh, we're targeting here. Invite others to contribute their ideas. They may help us. And then when it comes to screening, it may be of value to us to use a two-stage screening process, doing a quick cut to get rid of some that are obviously not appropriate, and then going on to the, the more careful screening based on specific needs. We would discard ideas with major weaknesses, 
keep the creative ideas that have potential and recognize that any good idea that you keep, if you hope to develop it further, is going to require dedicated work. So it's good to have people who are excited about the idea and willing to invest in its development. So our success comes about by feasible ideas and innovation is part of that. So to date, we have now covered the first four pieces here, steps, game strategy, defining needs, generating ideas, and screening them. Next time, we'll look at selecting concepts. This includes how to put concepts together on these ideas, and then how to select the best concepts to meet the needs of our uh, robot. Remind you that this is a series of lessons put together for robraters and Xbots. We hope others can also benefit from them. And the lessons can be found in the Pre-Engineering Primer 2nd Edition, Chapter 8. The videos we're putting on the Roberators YouTube channel and we want to thank FIRST for inspiring sporting events for the mind. Spring us on to generate ideas and solutions that have lasting value and that help us learn. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.